Hello all, it's Marco from Random Door Media. I was going to do a gameplay series on this game, but I do not think it's ready for that just yet. Therefore, I decided to make this video introducing the game and go over some of the game elements. The Dreamland, yet another in the long line of early access video games to appear on the Steam Store. Developed and published by LSLS Games, this appears to be their only game. It came to the Steam Store in January 2023. This video is being uploaded in February 2023, so if you're seeing this video in the future, this information might be out of date. The game's description is, This is a role-playing game which mainly focuses on casual gameplay such as construction, farming, fishing, and farming, and integrates a variety of combat elements and systems. The farming activity is so nice they mentioned it twice. You said farming twice. I like farming. So the game developers gave this description of what the game is about on their store page. Looks like there's supposed to be somewhat of a story behind it. You're the hero who saves the village. You travel the landscape finding other villagers and bring them together and peace and rebuild their homes. It has various gameplay aspects, fighting, building, planting, and more. And at the bottom it says, Stream Light Dream. In the dream, you will enjoy the beauty of different dreams and experience the danger of not being able to dream. We need your help. Alrighty. Hey, if you enjoy this video, maybe click on the like button. Perhaps subscribe to the channel. That will really help out as this is a growing channel. So I'm going to go over the character selection. The first thing that players will notice when starting a new game is the character creation. There is none. For some reason, the developers decided to go with a selection of stock video game character models. I actually found a website where many of these model assets can be purchased. Using ready-made assets in a game is not unusual. That is what they're there for. If a developer lacks the time or skill to create their own asset, they are available from third-party distributors. However, the developers seem to think that this character selection is a big deal as it's very prominent in their advertising. Super many playable characters. The future is promising and more characters are looking forward to your experience. Now previously, the only option was to click on random and it would choose one of these models at random. But recently the developers added the option to just select a model. So you can just click left or right and go through the model listing and pick one. Now how the character model looks has no actual impact on gameplay. It's just visual. If the character appears to have a sword or appears to be wearing armor, it is just for show. Next, you'll probably notice a pattern in the character selection and that all the models are female. Again, not sure why the developers decided on this. Perhaps this is just a placeholder while the game is being developed. Maybe customizable character creator will be added later. Who knows? But this is what got me wondering if this game is just some sort of quick cash grab attempt. Get some stock model assets, put them into a simplistic survival game, and not actually put any work in the game. So the big question is, is the Dreamland just an asset flipper being used as a quick cash grab, or is it a genuine game? Before we look at the game in any detail, I must point out that there is a free version of the game, and the developers advise of this as well on their store page. It appears that the free version has all of the gameplay content of the paid version, but just has less character models to choose from. When you want to open this game, please be sure to understand another game, the Dreamland Free. I don't want to waste your money. Okay, so it looks like you have the ability to play the game without any cost, so at least players can try it out for themselves. After playing the game for several hours, I can honestly say that the game has elements common to most survival games. Harvesting resources, crafting items, building structures, managing hunger and thirst. 
Yet this is not really portrayed in the game's advertising, which just seems to focus on the character models. Let's take a look at what is available. The Dreamland has elements common to a crafting, building, survival style of game. Resources can be gathered in the form of wood, stone, fiber, seeds, flint, iron ore, and more. There is a crafting system that begins with crafting a sharp stone that allows you to chop down trees. You can then gather wood and fibers to craft a stone axe to gather wood faster. Craft a stone pickaxe to gather stone and ore. From there, you can make a furnace to smelt iron ore into bars and sand into glass. A workbench then opens up a whole lot more crafting options. There are even a few more crafting stations that I didn't even check out, like there's a research table and an alchemical cauldron. There are animal raising elements that you can craft, such as a pig coop, a chicken coop, and a chicken feeder. You can construct fences and even spiked wooden fort walls. With the building plan, you can construct parts of a shelter with a decent number of options available. Then the work table lets you craft several items to decorate your home from paintings to carpets to potted plants and even an aquarium. Yeah, the game has a fair amount of content available right now. Crafting, gathering, building, farming. There is fishing, but I was not able to get that to work myself. Whenever I cast the rod, nothing happened. Maybe fishing has to be done in specific places in the world, but the game does not say that. There is a decent sized world to explore, and I encountered several points of interest. There are small POIs which appear to just be environmental dressing, nothing to do or interact with. Occasionally you will find small structures with two villagers that you can talk to and will follow you. The overall goal of the game is to rescue the villagers, however I do not believe that that element of the game is fully implemented yet. Then there are these large points of interest. I found this large mushroom treehouse looking thing. I looked over the small valley that had these giant swords scattered about. These locations did not have anything to interact with. But they had these features that looked like they would be something to interact with in the future. Maybe I failed to do something correctly, or maybe the features are not in the game yet and those errors will be developed over time. It's difficult to tell with early access games. Now the game does have some downsides however, and some of these are due to the fact that the game is still in development and hopefully will improve over time. First of all, the combat is questionable. Earlier on, I was unable to survive against two enemies, and you sometimes get attacked by two or three or even four enemies. Combat just seems to be like click once and you swing once, or you click repeatedly to do repeated slashes, and it seems to stun the enemy. And sometimes the enemy will just block all your attacks. At some point, however, I was able to find what appears to be a full set of armor from some enemy, and after I put that on, the combat seemed very survivable after that. After that, I was able to fight enemies as I traveled around, and they were little to no problem if they were in really small groups. Occasionally, I would find groups of like 10 to 12 enemies, which I just avoided. Unfortunately, there's no auto pickup. When resources fall to the ground from a boulder or a tree, for example, each piece must be gathered individually. This can be very tedious and annoying, especially when the resources either slide down a hill or disappear into the grass or bushes. Games like Minecraft have been out for a long time, and even that game has an auto pickup where you just run around and pick things up automatically. I found that the quests were lacking details. Once again, this could be due to the fact it's early access. When you go into the journal, there's just no information. So all you have is the quick blurb of the quest. The first quest I had was to talk to people nearby and find out how to enter the cave. There were three people nearby, of which two had dialogue options. I went through all the dialogue options, and none of that completed the quest. After my character died for the first time, 
the quest then changed to collect 10 water bottles. Okay, so what about the first quest? I guess I completed it? And how do I collect 10 water bottles? Eventually, just by playing the game, harvesting resources, crafting more items, I found out that sand could be smelted into glass, which could then be used to make bottles in the workbench, and then use an empty bottle with the well to make a water bottle. But where do I get sand? Occasionally, mining the boulders would yield like one sand, but it was not consistent. I had a shovel, but I could not find anywhere to dig up sand. And again, this information is not readily available in the game itself. Next, I have to say that the voice acting is comical. The characters in the game all appear to be female, but the voice sounds masculine and it also sounds like they're just saying gibberish. Additionally, the friendly characters are almost useless and will wander onto the spikes nearby or into a group of enemies and kill themselves. I found that thirst could be a big problem earlier on. When my character was not dying to the enemies, she was dying due to thirst. Items to satiate hunger were pretty common, even just a form of meat from the nearby animals that you could cook. But water was harder to come by. You can use glass bottles with a nearby well to make bottles of water, but the bottles always vanish after using. I rarely encountered sand to smelt into glass to make my own bottles. But then later on, after I was able to defeat the enemies regularly, I was finding empty bottles on them. After that point, I was getting more bottles and I was able to manage the thirst situation better. Okay, so what does the game have that's kind of unique or different? It does have a flying option built in. No need to use a cheat code or go into gym mode. Pressing the F key causes your character to sprout the spectral wings and you can fly. I discovered this when I fell into a deep pond near the start and I couldn't get out. I was pressing all the keys on my keyboard, seeing what they did, and I discovered that pressing F enabled the fly mode. This is what allowed me to fly around and at least explore some of the world. Next, they set it so that the F1 through F5 keys changes your character's look. Sometimes drastically, sometimes just a small amount. If you hold down the Alt key, you can move the camera to look at your character from different angles. And by pressing the F1 key, my character's outfit kept changing, but pressing the other key, she just added pauldrons and that's it. Oh, a word of caution. The Alt key plus the F4 key shuts down the application. So if you're checking out these variations while using Alt to view your character, Alt and F4 will close the game. It is interesting that the game has this option to change the character's look, because as I said earlier, I looted a set of armor from some enemy, but not only did it not change the character's look, I was unable to find any sort of character or inventory sheet that displayed the armor. I don't know what that was about. Pressing the P key puts you into a photo mode. In this mode, the game pauses and you can turn the camera to look at your character from any angle. Then there's a whole bunch of options available from changing the saturation to adding film grain. You can then take a picture and store it in an album. I guess this is for people who want to take pictures of their character and have various filters available. The option is there, and it's in the early access version of the game.
So in conclusion, I would have to say that yes, this is a genuine game. It has a lot of elements of a survival crafting building game. There is a lot to craft and quite a bit of decoration items for your base, including carpets and paintings. The game also has RPG elements in that your character gains experience points, increases in level, providing points to spend on making your character better. You can spend character points on attributes like strength and intellect, or in skills like lumberjacking, melee weapon damage, or even magic. I did not delve very far into it, but there is a system for some simple spellcasting. I had three options where I could launch a firebolt attack, or summon food, or summon water. I did not have enough mana for the other two, so all I could do was summon the firebolt. Sure, the game is currently limited, as it is still in development and being worked on. But there is plenty to do with the harvesting, crafting, farming, and building. Hopefully the developers will add to the points of interest and flesh out the storyline quest of finding and rescuing the villagers. The idea of the character creation being limited to just selecting a character model from a set listing seems odd to me, but that seems to be an aspect of the game that the developers really want. The game is early access, which means it's going to have limited content. The character selection seems limited to just some stock assets. The combat is not smooth and needs some working on. The friendly AI characters are pretty stupid. The questing needs more information. And the lack of auto pickup is tedious and annoying. What it has going for it, though, it's a pretty stable game. I've never had the game crash on me, and I only encountered one graphical glitch. It has solid gathering, crafting, building mechanics. There's an RPG system with experience, levels, and skill points. There's a variety of gameplay elements. There's a lot of decoration items for your base. There's a fly mode. And there's points of interest to discover, although they currently seem to be empty. If you want to check out the game, don't forget that there is a free version of it. Have you played the game yet? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. That's all I have to say about the Dreamland. I have other video series on the channel including game reviews, one-shot games, and even a few short gameplay series. That's it for now. Take care everyone.